everyone. Before we get into our conversation, I want to let you know this podcast is sponsored by BetRivers.com. BetRivers.com, the best place for all your sports gambling needs. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also watch all of these episodes on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. Now let's get into our conversation. What's going on, everyone? It's Eric Devendorf, your host of the Scores Table Podcast. And today we have another SU legend. And his dad was also an SU legend, which is pretty cool to me. Uh, right. He's from Syracuse, New York. Uh, he went to Janesville High School. He played at Q's 2005 to 2010. Uh, one of the greatest shooters in Q's history, but one of the greatest passers in Q's history, for real. People don't right. know that he's one of the, one of the better, better playmakers in Q's history, seriously. And he's also drafted uh second round by the new york knicks in 2010 my former teammate uh my good friend andy rowles appreciate you coming on bro what's up D? it's a pleasure to be here man i appreciate the uh the the intro that was nice of you to say man uh it's nice to hear that you know some of the some of the some of my game was underappreciated a little bit so i, I thank you for saying that man no bro seriously i tell everyone i said the most underrated one of the most underrated players in q's history because like He's like, oh, he's a shooter. No, like, he's one of the best passers on the team. He can get in the lane and make a good decision. High IQ. You just know how to play the game. I mean, that's why you made it to the NBA. So, Thank you, bro, yeah, man. no, bro. I, I tell people that all the time, bro. You already Thank know. You. Thank you. Yeah, I almost, honest, to be honest with you, man, I almost enjoyed making a better pass than scoring at any point. That just, to me, was like the ultimate thing, you know, to get your team involved, make a good pass, and uh, and just bring the crowd into it. I love that. But the apple didn't fall far from the tree, bro. I mean, that was your yeah. pops. That's what he was doing. Like, he was yeah, magic with it for real. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he was like, uh, he was essentially the same position as magic, you know? They came up yeah. in the same era, bird, the same kind of point forward situation. Um, but yeah, he was also a wildly underrated passer as well. Some of his old tape is pretty impressive. So let's, we'll start right there in Q's. You know, what was it like? Obviously, you were, you were in ball right away. I mean, with your dad playing and, uh, you know, playing pro, but what was it like for you growing up? And, and when was the ball really put in your hand and you were like, all right, this is, this is what I want to do? Man, from, from as from as young as I can remember, maybe three years old. Um, I remember growing up out there in Spain. My, my dad was playing in uh, Orense, Spain. I grew up there when I was three, stayed out there till we were about six. We bounced around from Spain to France, um, but I'd follow him to every practice, you know, get shots up when I could. Um, probably a huge pain in, in his ass at that point, but uh, <laughs> that's one of my best memories. Um, and, and yes, yeah, so, so as far as I can remember, I always had a ball in my hand and, and uh, you know, I think I knew I wanted to be a professional by the time I was maybe seven or eight. You know, I knew that was the ultimate goal, whether that was achievable or not, you know, was, was a whole different story. But uh, from, from as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to do that. So you, you, you're overseas, you're, you're living overseas, you're traveling with your dad who's playing overseas, and then you come back to Syracuse. Uh, and then you kind of, you sit in Syracuse for a minute, you go to high school there. Mm -hmm. What was it like, though, growing up playing in the Cuse and, and, you know, knowing you had your dad's name behind you? Uh, did people kind of like, you know, always try to compare you or, hey, your dad used to do this? Like, how was that growing up playing in the Cuse? Yeah, I mean, it could be tough. I think I had a, a, a plethora of support there in Syracuse. I had a really good support system, you know, whether it be my friends, you know, my, my family, you know, I have a lot of family in Syracuse that isn't family, but they are family, you know, the people that I grew up with that are near and dear to my heart. Um, and, you know, at times it could be tough. I think, you know, Syracuse is a, it's a smaller city, you know, there's, there's not a lot to talk about at times. So, so, you know, you might be the center of the focal point of conversation at times. And, and, and there is a little bit of hate everywhere you go, you know, but I think that's what part of makes you strong and kind of drives you to become the person that you want to be. And um, you got to take the good with the bad. Uh, you knew there was going to be those comparisons just because, you know, obviously my dad went to school there as well. Um, and he did what he did there. So uh, I, I, I took it full on knowing what, what the, the fallout might look like and, and, and what the, uh, you know, the comparisons and, and, and uh, you know, trying to live up to, to his shadow. So I took it in stride and, and it was a challenge that I, I wanted to take head on. Um, you know, he, he would always play devil's advocate. You know, he said, you know what's going to happen if you go to school here. Yeah. You know, with the comparisons, you know, you're going to get a lot of people saying you can't do certain things. Uh, you're only here for a certain reason. But, you know, that never fazed me. And uh, I, I appreciated him trying to make me understand that as well before going into it. Yeah. So, I mean, you made your, your own name 
well before you came to Syracuse. I mean, you were dominating at Janesville. You guys, I think it was your senior season. You guys were undefeated, twenty nine and zero. That's right. Uh, and yeah. and then also you had, I think, well, who was on that team? Was it was it uh, B Trish and was B Trish on that team? A younger B Trish. Brandon Trish was a he was a freshman at that point. <laughs> okay. He Brandon Trish was he was unreal. Like his body as a freshman and what he was doing, <laughs> like he was out there windmilling, putting it between his legs. We were like, where did this specimen come from? Yeah, uh, he's a GI Joe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his older brother Mike, he he was built too. He, he played with us. Uh, he was part of that championship roster too, and and he had some game as well. But but Brandon was ahead of his time, man. And he's he's still out there. He's still out there doing his thing right now. I, I can't remember. I think the last I saw, he was playing in Italy. But uh, but he's had a long successful career too. And and yeah, that that high school run, man, the twenty nine and zero was something special. Um, you know, that did kind of put my name in my junior year it, it kind of put my name on the map a little bit we won the state you know I wanted to win a state MVP you know not to toot my own heart or anything but I was still very much behind the eight ball in terms of where the top talent was in the country you know I was I was still getting you know I was only getting letters from 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 low to mid majors at that point um, you know by the time my senior year came around it was really only a few schools uh, Providence being one of them I uh, got some minor interest from from Florida State and then uh you know, out of the blue, I was fortunate enough to to just show my face around Manly. You know, Manly Fieldhouse. You remember yeah, that? absolutely. Uh, summertime runs. Summertime runs, exactly. Yeah, summertime, and 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 you remember all the, all the guys that are there. So, um, you know, I I just try to sneak in there after after my practices, or um, just to show my face. You know, just to to be seen. So Coach Bayon might see me. Uh, Bernie might see me. You know, just just in there working, so that they could potentially maybe see something in me and. Uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough that, uh, you know, something didn't work out with one of the guys and, and, and I was offered a spot. But, uh, you know, as much as people say, you know, you only got there for a certain reason, I, I feel as though it was it was well earned. I put my time in and um, I was actually rattled, man. I remember I remember you guys coming on your visit. You came on your visit and I was in the gym. We we, we were fucking around and. Uh, you know, I remember you just taking some shots and and uh, at that point you were you were like McDonald's all American. And I was looking at you like you were just here, you know, like th this is the level that I need to be at. And and I had like, you know, I had stars in my eyes looking at you and, and Arenze was a, you know, four star recruit coming from Maryland. So it was, it was, it was a lot to live up to, man. It was, it was tough coming in with that class, but I remember you guys just being great people right off the bat. And uh, I don't think there could be any two better people to come in with. I mean, we did our thing. We all went through our ups and downs. So it was a perfect class, man. Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now's the time. Bet Rivers Sportsbook is offering a 250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one play through to turn your bonus into cash money. When you win at Bet Rivers Sportsbook, they pay fast. And now it's even faster with rush pay instant approval for withdrawals. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable. With March Madness right around the corner, there's never been a better time to give Bet Rivers Sportsbook a try. Go to betrivers.com today or download the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call telephone number 1 800 Gambler. No, absolutely. So we'll we'll go back a little bit. Like yeah, we'll talk yeah. about talk about your recruitment because it was I think it was Providence and then Saint Bonaventure. Saint but Bonaventure, what, that's right. It's completely. What, what kind of what what show, what made you go to the Cuse and like like you said you, you were kind of underrated. You weren't getting the respect you think you, you might deserve. Did you kind of come in with a chip on your shoulder? Like, hey man, I'm 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 gonna show these dudes like this. Is, I belong here. Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, I remember I was I was gonna commit to Providence the day before that Bernie called me, I was gonna, I was gonna commit. And uh, something that happened with one of the scholarships and uh, it was just kind of a last minute thing. So I was at, you know, I, I went on my visit to Providence. I had dinner with Tim Welsh. Um, everything was good, everything was set. I had my workout, I had my little visit and it was good. Um, and then I had to call him the next day and be like, Syracuse offered me like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> that was the dream since day one. So I, I yeah. understood. I think they were a little bit upset by it, but um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was when they had. You remember Donnie McGrath and uh, Ryan yes, yeah, that they took me on my visit out there. Good guys, really good guys. Um, 
but uh, but to get that call was amazing. And yeah, I think I did come in with the chip on my shoulder. You know, I was like wildly underweight at that point, like maybe like a buck 70 soaking wet, you know? Um, but shit, I remember there was a lot of nights, man, like those first couple of weeks of practice and, and uh, um, you know, like March Mad uh, Midnight Madness came around and the guys are trying to establish themselves in the role. Yeah. I was like, fuck, like, where do I fit in here? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, how am I going to get these minutes? Uh, but it was just such a big step. You know, I think you guys yeah. had, you know, you playing at Oak, um, Oak Hill, you know, you had these these high level tournaments that you were not to say I played at Peach Jam a couple of times, but yeah. You know, I didn't have that level, uh, that level change, and, and it was a rude awakening. You know, going up against, you know, Ryan, um, Josh Wright, uh, D Nick. You know, you remember how physical Demetrius was? No question. Oh my God! And uh, so it was a rude awakening. It was a rude awakening. There was a lot of nights I went home to, to the dorm just thinking, "Fuck, man! Like, how how am I going to get there?" You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of somber nights, but early mornings as well. You know what I mean? So absolutely so happened. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that transition coming in, uh, you know, from Janesville, then going in, in, into Q's. Like you said, you're playing with, uh, you know, guys who were playing at Oka and myself, and then D Nick, and then Josh Wright, and then you coming in with the Reds Aid. And then we had Terrence Mookie. So our back line was like Mookie, oh, six my. foot, seven, six Very foot, ten, seven yeah. foot, six, ten. So, yeah. Well, what was that like for you? Like the first open gym, and, and talk about, we'll talk about the, um, so we used to do it where he, our midnight madness, he'd have us, Todd have us all come in. At midnight, and we do like the, uh, the tug, the the uh, rope pull, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> we, we, we tug this like I don't even know it was like a weighted piece of plastic that had two ends filled with yeah some kind of we were just like we were like animals just going at each other yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. that's that's how we wanted to but what was that like for you, bro? Like your first you're coming in your first run, uh, you know preseason you were like, damn, what you know what were you thinking? So I remember a couple of like the open gyms, I was like, cause you know, open gym is not the highest level you can go. You know, guys are just going there, get a sweat, get a run in. Yes. So I felt like, you know, I had a couple shots. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna blend in nice. You know, like I, I found my little, my rhythm or, you know, I got my shot off at least and I felt good about that. But then, you know, once the real practices started to roll around after Midnight Madness and then like I said, that that one uh, drill that we did is a perfect example where we were, we were doing tug of war from, the center court yeah first one to drag the other person out of the semicircle and or the circle in the middle yeah and i remember watching thinking fuck who am i going to match up with like who, who do i have a chance to get, you know not embarrass myself with i matched up with josh Wright, and i yeah i got tossed out of that circle <laughs> quick <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, shit, there's a lot of work to be done. And then uh, another specific memory that that sticks in my mind is um, you were playing uh, King of the Court. Um, and Mookie was out there playing, you know, Mookie, seven foot, you know, athletic as all hell. Yeah. So I hit him. I, I hit him with the hezzy. Huh. And then I drive into the lane. I'm like, I'm like, easy layup. You know, that's what you're thinking, like, because I didn't have anything to reference it from before. So I'm thinking easy layup. I go up, I, I'm thinking, oh, I might dump this one. I go up, all of a sudden out of nowhere, I just get fucking rocked. And I wind up flat on my ass. Mookie just caught up to me like in a flat half a second. And at that point I knew, man, I was just at a different level. Like I just knew that, you know, the amount of work that needed to be put in was gonna be, was gonna be, you know, it was gonna be a mountain to climb for sure. But, uh, but you know, I, I think Todd, Todd was, was, somebody who who helped me get right initially and then you know really once ryan came in ryan cabillas was kind of like my savior you know i think you remember ryan too yeah both we both had rehabs with ryan you know he was yeah we'll, we'll get to that for sure yeah 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 we, i'm 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 going ahead a little bit but yeah but uh but yeah i remember uh shit i remember craig forth i don't know if you remember craig forth but uh he was uh he was in the weight room same time as me. He was on his way out, actually. He was working out for pre-draft. And uh, dude, I couldn't lift the 25s on the bench on either side. I couldn't I couldn't do a bar in 25s. And I had <laughs> Craig in there just literally teaching me how to pick the bar up, how to properly get the bar off my chest. Um, so yeah, man, you know, from day one, I was, I was way behind the eight balls, you know, in terms of physicality, in terms of, um, you know, having the wherewithal, the experience of, you know, a higher level guys, so. You know, it, it's it's a rough transition for a lot of guys coming in. You know, let alone 
guys who were going to, you know, a, a, a double A, you know, a suburban school in upstate New York. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can look at Buddy Beheim right now is doing the same thing. You know, he's out there killing. So I got a lot of respect for him. No, absolutely. And, and you talk about, I mean, you're one of the most improved players that's ever come through Syracuse year after year. And I mean, even that freshman year, uh, you, you appeared, I think you appeared in almost, I think it was 20, 25 games, but you had, you had double figures a few times. And then we had that big, we had that big run at the end, uh, you know, where GMAC was, you know, hitting all the shots. Talk about that, that tournament run for you and your perspective and, and how that was for you just kind of, you know, going through all that and, and seeing all those big shots made. Well, for me, it was just like, I, w- I was just in awe. I mean, I think we all were at that point. Yeah. What, what Jerry was doing in the tournament, I remember you had a monster freshman year. You were absolutely killing. And it, at that point for me, I kind of knew that, you know, I wasn't so much going to be in the rotation, pardon me. Um, so for me, it was kind of just about soaking up as much knowledge as I could, you know, watching you guys and, and seeing how you moved and, and and where I could fit into that. and. Man, everybody wrote off Jerry. You you remember that like 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 yesterday, you know. Yeah. Everybody wrote Jerry off, saying you know he he was overrated, um, you know. But little did they know how hard he worked. You know, Jerry Jerry was one of the guys that brought me under his wing as a freshman. I remember being in in his room on the road a lot of nights, just kind of picking his brain. Um, and and he was really good to me when he didn't have to be, you know, because Jerry was like the guy. You know, he was he was yeah. a national championship guy. He's fourth year senior, so. I have a lot of respect for Jerry. He's obviously one of our really close friends to this day still. Um, but to see what he did, just that vindication, man, like just to just just to put a team on his back. And it, and it was a fun experience. I remember being there with Jake Prasuti, one of the best walk-ons. And uh, <laughs> you know, he's coaching over at uh, Marquette now, I think. Yeah, Jake's uh, the man. And uh, the helicopter. The helicopter, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep that one off the record, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, great, great guy. And, and I remember uh, we had some we had some great celebrations down there on the end of the bench watching you guys do your thing. And, uh, and it was a hell of a time to remember, man. It was really special. But I know you I, you soaked all that up. I know you did because that second year, uh, you know, our sophomore year, you came back, you played in every single game, mm. uh, the be- best three point shooter on the team. And that was the year we bro, we got we got ripped off, man. Like we, we ended up being like, I think we, we were like 10 in, I don't know, our last two games or last 10 games, eight and two. And then we were like 22 and 10 overall. And we ended up, you know, we ended up going to the NIT or what, whatever. What year, what year was that? That was 2007, 2008. You remember what we were, when we were in coach's basement and we were all waiting for, for our name to get called. And we, I just recently we, talked about it on my podcast. We were, I think we were, Damn, hold on. Let me let me bring this up just to be just to have some clarity on it. Yeah, we. I mean, we were we were in the basement waiting. Yes. And I remember, Coach left after the first the first bracket. The part of the bracket got announced because he knew he knew he knew he, knew. he, he rounded up Sports Center, ABC, whatever, he, every major network to to plead his case. Rightfully so. I mean, so. Man, I remember like, man, fuck this. I'm not playing in the NIT. Fuck that. We got, <laughs> yeah. Man, we, yeah. We, and we, got, we, wound, we wound up playing Clemson, I think. Uh, yeah, we lost to Clemson at Clemson. At Clemson, that's right. Which okay. was a super yeah. athletic team. Trevor Booker, uh, Sykes. Casey uh, Rivers was on that team. Casey Rivers, Rivers shooting that thing left hand. That was my teammate at Oak Hill. Yes, yes. He, and he wound up having a monster career overseas. I think he's, uh, he, he's, he's still, still over there right now. Um He's still and for sure. the Euro League team, man. And uh, I forget. Oh, Zalgiris. Zalgiris. Yeah, Zalgiris. Yeah, top, top. Yeah, I played against him last year, man, and he's still got it. I mean, he's got a, he's got a ratchet. Yeah, he, he I, can shoot I, that. I don't know why I can't find this fucking, this team. Well, 07, that's when we had. So it was me, you, Terrence, D Nick, Josh Wright, um, Big Mook, mm-hmm. uh, Louis, Louis McCrowski, uh, Remember we had Paul come in, Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Hey, oh look, Andy, God. Mike Jones was super talented, bro. One of the most one if, like if he panned out, honestly, he could have been he could have been an all-star. In, in the Man, league. I'm trying mm-hmm. to tell you. Didn't ne- did never never lifted a weight, country strong as shit. I'm talking about he never knew how to lift a weight in his butt. He'd just go like this. <gasps> I'm talking about hard. <laughs> yeah. Bro, yeah. so so talented, six seven, like he just you know, 
Why whatever we... happens, happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that's all blurred to me now, but, but fuck, Mike was so talented. I remember he gave everybody the fits in practice. It's yeah, with that, you know? that's the difference, bro. Like, ain't not taking nothing away from, you know, uh, you know, this, you know, college basketball now or whatever, but man, right. we was playing games in our practice. Like, that's how hard dudes was going. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, how many times you remember dudes just go getting fights, getting at, you know, getting at each other, just even hop instigating shit. You know what I mean? Oh, hop was. <laughs> I wanted that at the end of the day. And, you know, I, he, I think he knew that built <laughs> yeah. camaraderie between us. You know what I mean? At the end of the yeah. day, if you go to war with your guys in practice, you're, it's going to translate to to the games. And you better fucking kill Andy, Eric. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hop was wild, man. He's off the charts. Uh, where's Hop at right now? He's at, he's at UW, right? Yeah, he's at UW. Yep. Okay, okay yeah, I remember – I remember um, – Damn, I'm st I'm still I don't know if I'm technologically challenged or what. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, so I'm we definitely were six. We finished fifth in the Big East. Fifth in the Big East, bro. Fifth, fifth in the, the Big, Big East, East, the real Big East. When the Big East was the Big East. Come on, man. The big like uh, UConn. That was when they had like Rudy Gay, Charlie uh, Villanueva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that might have been our freshman year though, because Rudy Gay left right. He he was a sophomore. He left right away. Oh, me... Remember that? Do you remember that our freshman year? When um we played UConn, and, and we came to, and they came to the dome, and then they had this is when Marcus Williams stole the laptops. Was that was that when they had um, uh, uh Denim Brown, Denim uh, Brown, Rashad Boone, Anderson, Josh Boone, jo Hill and Armstrong. Remember Louis Lee came so down and banged on my man. Yes. Yes. Hill and Armstrong, what a throwback, man. <laughs> <laughs> that team was so stacked. And I remember Georgetown, too. Georgetown was equally as stacked. They had Jeff Green. Roy uh, Hibbert. Roy Hibbert. Uh, Ashanti Cook. Uh, Jonathan Wallace. Brandon Bowman. Those were our, those were our, uh, yeah, he was our year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I those, mean, those were tough dudes, though, huh? Like, long story dudes. short. 10 and six in that conference is good enough to get in the tournament in my mind. You know, we've finished 24 and 11 overall. You know how like the, the our preseason schedule is always solid. You know, we always get, we always rack up wins. Before we went to, we went to, uh, so that sophomore year, remember we, so remember we played like, uh, we had our own little tournament at the Dome where we won it and we played like, we played like UTEP. Remember Randy Culpepper, the little yes. guard, uh, DJ Steffens. Yep. So we, we play UTEP, then we play, I forget North who else East we play, Richmond or something. Who else we play? I think it was Northeastern and, and Charlotte. Or yeah, Richmond. there you go. For games, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I remember that year being, being feeling really like we got, we got the short end of the stick. Um, and even the NIT that year was really strong too. So uh, either way, we got, we got a good run out of it. But uh, yeah, I remember that my sophomore year, man, I was like, I was start. I think I started twenty games. I was really, yeah, I was really feeling myself that year. I was like, oh, I'm big shit now. You know, I'm starting twenty. Yeah, games. yeah. You used to play, but you you played all thirty five. You were, I think, you were shooting. I I saw uh, thirty nine, thirty eight, thirty nine percent from three point. You were, yeah. you were. That's what you did. But but I'm saying, bro, I would I would see little highlights, just shit where you, it'd be something simple. You catch it, be like, boom, take a step, and then and then hit my man. Like it's just the right play. People don't understand when they see it. Like my man. My man know how to play ball, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you you would always we had, and when I, again when I look back at those at those videos, we had a good chemistry too. Like, cause we knew we could kick, penetrate, kick one dribble, kick to each other. It might I might penetrate again and come back, kick right to you. Like you had that. Yep. We were always a threat to like you had to come at. You it, had to respect right? our jumpers no matter what. But you more so you'd be able to get in the lane, make a play. I remember you were finishing two hands, two feet back in the day. I don't think I forgot about that. I remember just going hard. up trying to. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a we had a nice little team, man. It, it was definitely unfortunate that we that we didn't make the tournament that year. But but you know, the following year we did bounce back and we had another good year. Um, I'm trying to think who we played that year. So so that so that next year in that summer, bro. Mm -hmm. I want to say this that summer. That's when you tore your ACL. That's when I tore my ACL. That's right. So and then so you tore your ACL. This is this is 07, 08, because this was our sophomore year was 06, 0, 07. Right. So so and 07, 08, you say it again. That's when Scoop came in, right? Scoop and Rick. Yes, yeah, that's what so that's when Johnny, Dante, Scoop, Rick, 
but so but but you had, you had already and I remember bro being I remember being in Atlanta bro uh, and and I, I swear I remember this I I got I don't have great memory but for some shit I don't know why the fuck I remember that shit I, yeah so I remember I was in Atlanta with oh uh with Olu uh -huh. I was with Olu it was funny because oh, you know team. that that Canada connection right so we we're we we're watching the game bro you were playing Brazil uh huh. And you're yeah. playing Brazil, and I remember you just, it was like an awkward slip or something against uh, Barbosa. And I'm Barbosa, like, fuck. Man. I'm like, fuck. You got a good man. memory, man. That's impressive. Bro, I saw that. Seriously, bro, I remember that, and I'm like, fuck. And then I remember just hearing, you know, obviously we knew right away because we yeah, were making yeah. whoever calling, but I'm like, damn. And then, yeah. and then, so you going through that, and then we go 10 games into the season. Man, I do the same. Man, you shit, do the same man. fucking thing. I remember being. I remember being crushed because I, I know what that felt like. You know what I mean? And I know you yeah. were on a wave. You were on like a really high trajectory. And to see that happen to you was like, it was devastating, man. It's, it's, it was season ending. Um, you know, just to think about where you were going at that point and, 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 and to know what you had ahead of you. Cause I was already a couple months in the recovery process at that point. But at the yeah. same time, it was a blessing too, because you know, at the end of the day, I was there still. I was just starting to go through that, you know? And I remember how down you were early, you know, you know seeing you in that position and, and, and I felt for you, but, you know, immediately you had the, the presence of mind to just say, fuck it, you know, we got to turn it back on. There's only one thing we can do right now. I remember how, like, I remember vividly your attitude towards it. You know, you let it hurt for a day or two, but then you were like, there's no other choice, you know? We got to get after yeah. it. So, um, yeah, but I think we've caught ourselves up to speed in terms of, of talking about Ryan Cabillas and, and his his impact on both of our careers in terms of our, our recovery. I mean, Ryan was the guy who you could call literally any time of the day, Brad Pike as well. Brad Pike, you can't underestimate Brad. Brad was, they were both right there. They're synonymous in, in, uh, in the recovery process. But um, but night and day, man, you know, the, the difference between the attention to detail, um, you know, really, really, figuring out what what is best for, for your body type, you know, doing prehab to make sure your other side is equally as strong as your other side. Uh, uh, and, and they just made themselves available night and day. And that 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 spoke volumes about their commitment to the university, the commitment to us. And, um, you know, that's when my body really, really changed. You know, I went from, you know, a, a skinny, you know, guy that you could push around, you know, get off his spot to somebody who made a commitment to, to eating the right way, you know, to lifting heavier weights, which I, you know, as you know, a lot of shooters can think that, oh, if I lift heavy weights, it's going to throw my game off. I won't be able to shoot as well. But um, that's a, that's a myth through and yeah. through. You know, that's a myth. Um, and and as soon as that happened, you know, things started to change for the better. I remember, you know, our campaign the following year, where we both came, came back out. We were strong, man. We were. We, I remember we beat. Uh, I think it was Kansas in the preseason tournament. And Florida. And Florida. Same and tournament. Florida. We came out and made a statement. So that was just a testament to you know, the amount of work and attention to detail that Ryan and Brad put in. And, and, and if these, if you guys are listening, I'm, I'm, I'm still super grateful and thankful to this day for all that you guys have done for Eric and I, um, and, and, and whoever comes to that program is in, is in wildly good hands. I mean, they're, they're going to get the top treatment, the top care and, and, uh, you know, they do things the right way there for sure. Uh, man, I, I just remember two a days with Brad. I remember that man put putting that putting that knee on where like you gotta let it hang to, yes. to go through the scar it's tissue. The, it's called the prolong or something. Prolong. Uh, and pro then he trying to he's sitting on it trying to yep. you know what I mean? Like put it back. Yep. I'm like easily, easily one of the most painful experiences of my entire life. It was the pro it was the pro it was the pro nation hang with the like yes. and then the other one was taking the towel and bringing back your knee to your oh, chest. Oh. Scar tissue. I can still feel it to this day. Awful. But Brad, but Brad didn't let you cop out, man. You know, if you were crying, if you were bleeding, whatever, you know, he knew when to push it, how to push the tempo. It was something he'd been there be through before. So, you know, I don't think we would have had the same mobility or, or, or you know, the same turnaround if we weren't with Brad during that time period. So hats off, man, big time. Ha, ha, shout out Ryan and Brad. No, no bullshit like that. I cried. I did oh, cry. Yeah. I did. I did shed a tear. I, I swear. I swear on everything. I did. Hundred percent. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was just. Imagine. You know, scar tissue is trying to settle, and and, and you got to break that. You know, and then you, the Graston tools as well. I don't know if you guys. Uh, know. Yeah. 
I mean, you 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 break the scar tissue in the fascia, and sometimes <laughs> you bleed through your skin. You know? Hey, bro, I remember. So, like, you know, Ao had his Ao always came in and got his treatment because he had his knee Every, his knee issues. He was, and first. I remember. So, speaking of the little tools, yeah. man, he digging in you with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, so I remember it might have been Karen or somebody doing mine, and then Brad doing Ao or vice versa, whatever. Yeah. And I remember. You know they doing the tool on AO and just like you know what I mean like <laughs> getting after it and I'm and I'm you know I'm saying I'm looking at AO AO just like this. Sure. He was always, <laughs> he was always he was always locked in, man. I said, and, hey uh, man, you hey you don't feel that? Yeah. Hey, do you feel that? Hey. And then he hits you with one of these. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel it. Hey, oh, yeah, hey, 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 always, man. Stoic, you know, we we had a great we had a great group that came in, bro. Me, you, and A. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, I so I remember AO went through a period where he was changing his body too, and uh, yeah. you know he, he was he was big time committed. You know, at six nine to carry that frame to be as chiseled as he was. Are you kidding me? Like specimen, you know? Specimen, uh, bro. Yeah. He 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 definitely. I, I want him with me. I want him on my oh, side. Thousand percent. And and <laughs> I, I think about this to this day. You know, if he didn't <laughs> if he didn't wind up going down against Georgetown, obviously that was my senior year, but. Um, if he didn't wind up going down, man, we would have been national champions. Like, it, hands down, that, that's just how I feel. It's not to say that we couldn't pick up the slack. It's not to say that, you know, our, our front court wasn't enough at that point. It was just, he had that factor, you know, that X factor about him. You know, he's a leader on the team, um, leader of the field goal percentage in the country, you know, so, yeah. so those, those things did hurt and, and just his presence alone. Yeah, but but like you said, man, two, two, two really solid guys to come in and, and work with because I think that was our MO. We were just workers, man. No, absolutely. We we definitely stayed in the gym. So okay, we'll go. We'll, let's go to 08, 09. Mm -hmm. Now this was this was a special, bro. We had some talent on this team, man. And you know, like you said, you built your body up, you built your mind up, you got stronger. Like you that year, you came back. Like you remember when? Uh, remember when we doing the we hop? We coming in, boom. Oh, working and on then, <laughs> yeah, working on angles. I didn't even know what an angle was before that. You know. That's Save my look. I'm telling. I'm talking about an angle right now to this day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that team. That I remember. You know, I think it was John. We, Johnny was there too. Johnny and Paul as well. Yep. And Johnny, we, Paul, Rick, uh, Chris Shaw. Yep, Christoph. And, and I remember those 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 first couple of practices were up at the dome. And I remember a couple of NBA teams came to just kind of check practice out. And I remember the tenacity we were getting after it with. You know, it was kind of like. It was kind of like, uh, 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 what's his name from the Avengers? Uh, he got all his rings back, you know? It was like oh, all, yeah. all the stones were in place, the infinity <laughs> stones were in place. Yeah. You know, everybody was feeling like this was our year. So, I mean, we buckled down from from defensive drills, sliding in the paint to, you know, giving up our bodies on charges. And and uh, I remember I got, in, I got into a fight with Paul on, on court. We got into a scrap that one day. I, I thought I was, I thought I was dead. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> But at least we were at that level of compete, you know, where where, no where it got to that point. And uh and yeah, we, we we did wind up having a pretty where did we finish that year? So we went eleven and seven in the big east and twenty-eight and ten overall. Uh who do we want to That was a bro, that big east was a monster, dog. Like I mean yeah, that course. UConn was four in the nation with the beat that Pittsburgh has Sam Young, Dewan Blair, uh Louisville had Edgar Sosa, Terrence Williams, Earl Clark. Samardo Samuels. Jesus, that the, team was that Louisville team was we couldn't beat them. They were tough, bro. Tino figured out our zone. They were so athletic. That was, that was a really tough team to beat. Um, they were tough, bro. Then you had Pitt, Connecticut, Villanova, Marquette to round out the the top five in the Big East. Marquette was tough as shit. Marquette was really tough. That was Jimmy Butler. That was Jimmy Butler's team. Jarrell McNeil, Lazar Hayward, Wesley Matthews. Yeah, they they had a squad, and they just played real tough though. They played, you know, you know that's their mo. That's Korean's mo. You know, they, they play hard nosed. I remember Jimmy Butler was playing like all 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 five positions. He's yeah, he, cleaning up the he, ball, he just, rebounding, blocking shots, dunking on everybody. Like JB was, he was he was the guy before before he was the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but 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 we were but our team, bro. Like, just think we had, bro. We were look at our guard rotation. You know, myself, Johnny, you, Johnny, Paul, Paul, Paul Harris, like, right, I mean, bro, like, those four dudes right there. Yeah. Well, whoever, like, whoever wanted to swap. So, I remember I got in trouble that year and I got suspended, but I remember watching you guys go down to Memphis. Bro, Memphis was tough with 
they had some talent. Like you remember those guys, Robert Dozier. Dozier. Um, yeah. uh, they had the little Willie Kemp and all those guards. Like they could, man, went down there and destroyed them. You had like 26. Johnny was just getting in the lane, kicking it out, making plays. I do. I specifically remember that trip. I remember layup lines of that trip. I don't know why. That's the only thing that's sticking out to me. But uh, but I remember the confidence we had at that point, man. We we were we were rolling. We felt good. Um, and yeah, and you come back and hit nine threes against you against Coppin State. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Coppin State was a was a nice little statement game for us too. Um, those non conference games in the dome were always weird, huh? It's like it's like you knew it's like at the end of the day you knew you were gonna win, but yeah. you had to come out and compete because like any one of the like Cleveland State for example. I don't I don't, uh, I don't remember what what year was that? That might that was so, that was our sophomore. Sophomore because year. that was our only loss in non-conference. That was the last non-conference game of the year. Right. And my man, my man hit a fucking three-fourths, you know, yeah. quarter shot. Off the glass. Clean Off through. the glass, man. I, I was like, yo, Gosh. are you serious? But at least you didn't have to, at least you didn't have to deal with the fallout of losing to Lemoyne my senior year. We lost to Lemoyne. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no excuses to lose to a division two school in your in your own backyard. You know? I talked to West. I talked to West about this because West yeah. had thirty four. Yeah, West was West was waiting to come out and ball. He because he redshirted the year before, and uh, and and that was yeah. Like, we bro, uh, we, we just think if we had him on that 08-09 team, uh, he was because 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 look, this is what they don't know. He was practicing practicing with us the whole yep. year. Yeah, so we so knew like, what, so, we knew what we had. We knew. Oh, but, but and but you could but you can just imagine the practices, bro. Like you oh, said, yeah. you you were fight you you getting in with Paul. I remember Johnny like, but coach was like, "What well, coach would just let it go?" Yeah, he just yeah. he just let it happen, let it play out, and then he'd be like, "All right, all right, just like, break <laughs> yeah. it out." Yeah, you know what I mean, I mean like, they very much uh, they cultivated like a, a a pro style atmosphere there. You remember practices? You came in, you got your work done before practice started. You know, you were yeah. expected to get your work done before practice, and then practice itself. The, the meat of it was was you know hour maybe hour twenty hour thirty, but it was hard. We got after it, and then after you stay, you get your shots, get your lift or whatever. But uh, but yeah, it's very much catered to uh to the next level, and I think Coach Beheim knows that they they have that system. I, I don't want to say it's similar to Kentucky's that whole one and done situation, but it's very much a pro ran university. Um, and speaking of West, yeah, and during that whole season where he was just practicing with us, I only remember West just going like this. <laughs> yeah. Every time you throw him a lob, just higher, just throw it higher, and you throw yeah. it to the point where you feel like fuck. I'm gonna throw it out of bounds, or I'm gonna throw it over the backboard, and he would always get it. Free. My man had pogo sticks in yeah, his leg, at least. And it was funny because I just wound up with him uh, in Greece uh, this past season. We were playing out there in Panathinaikos together, and uh, came into kind of a weird situation. You know, it was uh, the team wasn't wasn't doing the hottest. Uh, they were going through some some financial issues and you know but but nonetheless man Jimmer Fredette was out there Wes was out there and, and that was enough for me because you know Jimmer grew up in the backyard in, in Glens Falls and uh, and to play with Wes you know to be with with a guy as you know like some familiarity overseas is it, it means oh, you, you know you need that bro you need, you need that uh, are we hanging out every day every day yeah so, <laughs> Wes, has like, Wes has like seven kids now so like it was a little bit harder but you know just to see him go from, you know, the capacity that we're in college to, to pro and he has a whole entire family. You know, I saw him along the way when I was with Toronto uh, in preseason. I played against him with, when he was with the Clippers. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it's always love, man. It's always love with Wes. One of the best dudes I know. Um, and, and I'm not sure what he's trying to do, but I think he can still play in the league, to be honest with you. Like he's still. So happy. look, so look, bro, he. He, I had him on a podcast and yeah. he, officially, he officially retired on the podcast. Bro. No, get the fuck out of here. He did because he, and he he was talking about um, you know Doc Rivers was hitting him up to coach in Philly really? you know so, yeah you know, he, he has some opportunities to be I mean he's good right he can figure it out but well he's good and to me yeah. he's he's got that that personality that persona to be a coach in the league he really does you know yeah. I, I think he can be really successful he's a player's guy you know he gets along with everybody he's super likable and he's got he's got you know high basketball IQ as well so that's gonna help out a ton but damn yeah. I didn't know that I didn't know he shut it down. The last yeah, I saw so, him when we were in Greece, he was like, "Yeah, I, I want to get back to the league." And I think, I, I think, I mean, I, you know, he called it on the show, bro. So I, you know, I'm gonna hold him to I mean, it, I guess. 
playing for Patino, man, will make you shut that shit down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to Patino, Patino man. Yeah, shout out, shout out Rick Patino, man. He, man, one of the greatest coaches to do it for sure. One of the greatest man, character. He's a good, really, really good guy. Um, he's every bit of of the persona that you think he is. You know how because we play against Louisville and you'd hear stories, Rick Patino, this, Rick Patino, that. And uh, and he's a legend, man. He's like a living legend. You know, you have. I was having dinner with him, and I was just sitting there looking at him, like, "Oh shit, it's Patino." You know, <laughs> like it's, no question, it's Patino. You know, and he he has stories for days, man. And uh, one of the most charismatic, you know, truly genuine people out there, and tough guy to play for, to say the least. But 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 really good, really good person. Yeah, definitely, definitely demands a lot out of you. I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean. Practices were tough, man. They were, they were, they were like college ran practices, which, you know, it doesn't really translate well to overseas because guys exactly, are certain, exactly you know, professional level of practice. So, it was some discrepancies there, but overall, man, he, he knows exactly how to win. I'll say that much. No doubt. So we talked, we talked about losing to Lemoyne, but then shit. After that, like eight weeks straight, number one in the country. I think it was. I think you guys ended up like thirty four and two, bro, going through. North Carolina and, and Michigan State and, and, and teams like that, and I mean, you guys yeah. are the best team in the country the whole year. Yeah, yeah, that was that was our coming out party that that tournament in New York. We had the two K tournament, I think it was. Yeah, um, and we came out. We put we put a hurting on North Carolina, and then West West came out. Had about 20, 27, something like that. Chris Joe came out was playing like a monster in transition. Scoop Scoop was playing really well in defense, getting everything out and organized at the point guard position and. And I was just kind of, you know, all over the map, mixing it up with everybody. And 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 the feeling that we had at that point in time was nobody could beat us. You know, you, you go out and you, you blast North Carolina at the Garden on national television, you know, that's going to give you all kinds of confidence. So I remember taking that feeling and just and just running with it. And the guys on that team, and they were so, they were so, I don't even know how to put it. They They absorbed everything. You know, they were open to, constructive criticism you know nobody took offense to anything everybody wanted to be on the same page and the ultimate goal was just to win and you know as you know like guys certain guys coming in and out each each year everybody has different goals you know everybody you know has a different plan and it might not be the same synergy that you get year by year but but that year was really special because I feel like there was no egos on that team I feel as though everybody just wanted one thing and that was to win and uh we hit a hiccup. We lost a pit at home, and that was uh, that was like a little bit of a road bump for us. And I saw guys hanging their heads, and 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 uh, I remember trying to relay a message like, like so fucking what, you know? Like this isn't the end of the season. Like let's let it. It's a bad practice. Let's put it that way, you know. And then the next game is is, a, is our only goal. The only thing we're focused on is the next game. And and carrying that mentality all the way throughout the year kind of led us into that position that we, you know, to reach the number one spot, which was, you know, nobody thought was feasible. Not even, I don't even think half the guys in the locker room believed we'd be number one at that point, but, but it came together nicely, man. And uh, yeah, that's one of the biggest things of that, that year for me was just, was just the overall feeling and camaraderie between the guys. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> yeah, I had West on, I had Scoop on, and that was kind of the same exact thing that they said. They, yeah. you know, everyone was real selfless and, uh, you know, no one had an ego. No one was like, hey, this is my team. It was it was everybody playing their role, doing what they're supposed to do. And, and obviously you being the leader, and, you know, Scoop talked about it, too. Like you were the leader of that team. You you had all the experience. Um, you know, we, we forgot we, we forgot to talk about the 6 0 T game. We'll talk about it in a second. But, you know, you played in all those type of situations and games. So, yeah. uh, you know, that and, and then so and then you go throughout the whole season, you know, you're number one uh, Big East champions. Uh, and then, you know, you get to the Big East tournament and, and we talked about it earlier, AO gets hurt. You know what I mean? What was like, what was the morale with the team? You know what I mean? Because like you said, that was national championship. What yep. was what, what was going through everybody's mind when AO went down and then you, you heard like, hey, he can't play? Man, uh, first, first I want to say a quick shout to Scoop. Scoop has got to be one of my favorite people I've ever played with. Just, you know, from, from where he came from to how he handled himself in school to how he grew as a, as a player and as a person. And, and getting to be a little bit of a part of that, you know, just to just to experience his growth was was amazing, man. I, I love Scoop and I got major respect for him. But uh, I remember we beat Georgetown uh, to win to to win the Big East. No, we lost to Georgetown. Matter of fact, 
We lost in the first. tournament. In the in, tournament. In the Big East tournament. That's right. Yeah. That's so when Ao got hurt. Yep. So I remember the post game press conference. Wes and I were looking at the stat sheet. You know, just kind of perusing our, our numbers or whatever, laughing, having a joke, thinking, okay, like Ao went down, but you know, it'll be fine. Whatever. Um, and I remember it being light. You know, everybody was like, okay. We lost, but you know, we're still number one in the country. You know, we're gonna get a one seed most likely. So we're not going to take this one too, too much to heart. We won the Big East outright, you know, during the regular season. So, you know, they can have it, whatever. And then I remember the, the following day, we got the news about Arenze, the seriousness of Arenze, Arenze's injury. And we were kind of all scratching our heads, like, what the fuck? You know, this is our guy. This is the rock of the team. You know, this is our, this is our, our, our center to the zone, man. And as you know, that's the most crucial Component man, that oh, if you if you got a guy in that middle holding it down, you are gonna yeah. be straight. He gonna get yeah. everybody right. Hundred percent. You know he's blocking shots. He's finishing with ease. You know, ao left hand, right hand around the rim. He was just yeah. automatic, man. So, so to lose that, to lose that presence, man, it took a lot of wind out of our sails. To be honest with you, and um, you know, Gonzaga was a team that that we could kind of we could kind of cruise through. I don't think they matched up to us at at all levels, but then. You know, once we once we saw Butler, man, we thought, okay, same thing. You know, they don't have that presence in the middle. They had like Matt Howard. You know, he was like six, six eight on a good day. Had a dirty little mustache. But he he was stepping <laughs> out though. He was stepping out too. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. he was shooting that thing too. But we looked at it on paper as like, okay, add us. You know, we're like, it, like we're getting to them next the next round no matter what. And I think. I was underestimating them a little bit and being a little bit overconfident in ourselves. When the game started, we were not ready for that level of physicality that Butler had. We just weren't. Because you're thinking this is what, a, a MAC-10 team? Is that what it was, the conference? Oh, they're a... Uh, A-10? Horizon? Horizon? Was it? The Horizon, excuse me. Horizon yeah. League. Yeah, Horizon League, something like that, you know? At the and, time, I think, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, like... You hear stories of, of, of Gordon Hayward and, and and Matt Howard and Ronald Norad. You hear like, okay, they got a good team, whatever. But we're number one, so you know, exactly what I'm talking about. So so we get out there and and Brad Stevens had them fucking prepared. I'm talking about down to I heard this story. Maddie Reynolds was telling me because he wound up working for Brad Stevens with Boston. Yeah, Maddie Reynolds is one of the one of our uh, assistant managers on the team. Great Shout guy. Out. No, it's great dude. Love Maddie. Shout out Maddie. Um, but he, he said he had scouted me on which side to come on my left side, on my inside left foot or my, on my inside right foot shooting, coming off, catching, shooting threes. So they scouted me. They said I was three percentage points less going from my, from right to left, to, from to left to right. So he, he stayed on my hip the entire time, Ronald Norad. He didn't let me breathe. So that level of scouting coupled with the physicality that they came with, we were just, we were, we were stunned in the first. And then at that point, you know, it was a dogfight and it came down to just not making shots and a couple of careless turnovers. I still remember turning the ball over a couple of times and, uh, you know, trying to get that chase down block on Ronald Norad. I, I missed it. And I remember AO sitting on the bench, you know, feeling so helpless. Um, but to lose that game, man, it was, it was heartbreaking because that was, you know, we had the orange strong in attendance. Um, and, and just to have such high aspirations. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to shout out the Orange Faithful, man. Some of the best fans in the world. But, um, you know, to lose that game was was, was devastating, man. It was, that, that was the dream, you know, since you were a kid to get to the, to the NCAA championship. And, and it was so close, man. It really was. It, it was. it was right at our fingertips. And, uh, you know, but I think ultimately that kind of propelled a lot of us to, to, to move on with our careers and kind of fueled our, our, our post-collegiate careers. Yeah, that I mean, I had AO on and everyone I talked to about it. I mean, that was the national championship year. Bro, yeah. no question. No question throughout the regular season. Like, you guys were the clear best team in the country for the whole yeah. year. You know what I mean? I mean, nobody could fuck with us in transition. We were the best transition team by by a mile. You know, Chris Joe and, and Wes getting out in transition, it was over. You know, and Scoop with the ball, like, it, it, was, it was too much for, for opposing defenses. And, uh, and yeah, just to go from from being so far under the radar to number one was an accomplishment in itself. But you know, to not to not complete it, you know, it was was the that, that's the thing that still stings me to this day. I think I don't think I don't think any one of us will will tell you that we're okay with it. You know, 
So right. Yeah, that's just it is what it is, though, man. So you, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. We, you hit a lot of big shots in your career, bro. But I, for me, the two that really stand out, um, I, and and I might be wrong, but in the six OT game, I think it was the third OT. You hit a huge one, and then it might have been either the fifth or the sixth. It might have been the fifth one where you mm-hmm. hit it with that. Yeah, was it? It was the fifth. Two two big ones, bro. Like talk about you know that moment hitting those shots. I mean, I, I'm I'm just I'm gonna go back to you growing up in Syracuse. Your dad played for the Cuse, like. Like we talked about, you underrated. Nobody thought you was going to play at the Q's following your dad. Now you come, you, you, you know, you grow into this, uh, you know, very good player and, and making your own name. And then you certify a lot of it by hitting those type of shots. And then those had to be, those shots had to be two of the biggest shots of your career. Kind of break down those and then talk about that, you know, that game from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, man, Johnny was balling out. And, and Paul was too. I think they yeah. really combined for like 70 or something. So at that point, it was kind of just like, you know, get in where you fit in, like let them let them do their thing and kind of just space out to see what happens. So I remember they started closing the lanes because, I mean, Johnny was getting whatever he wanted. Paul was getting what, like endless rebounds, kickout situations. So, you know, they started to close that down and pack the paint a little bit. And I remember just looking at Rick because I was in the corner at that point. I looked at Rick and I said, I said, Samuel, you know, and Rick looked at me, you know, I said, uh, I think uh, Craig Oster was on me at that point. So I set him up with the inside jab to the left, you know, as we do, do coming off for, for uh, you know, catch and shoot. Yeah. And I, peel, I must have peeled Rick's skin off his arm. I came off that close. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, how you're supposed to come off. Exactly. Exactly. You got to take a little bit with you. Yeah. So I came off. And at this point, all I'm seeing is rim. Little did I know watching the film afterwards, the sheen to beat was like, right there and this laser focus you laser focus you locked in yeah 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 you know the ones when you get into that flow state sometimes you don't even remember hitting it don't even matter it's 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 just it's regular it's memory it's just every time it's repetition just just muscle memory at that point so yeah so i remember catching and shooting and and i don't think i really understood the magnitude of the shot at the time it was like okay cool like we get to go to overtime again you know like it's another chance to stay alive but you know, I think it, you know, staying in that frame of mind as to where, you know, winning the game was the ultimate goal as opposed to, you know, how big the shot was, was, was the determining factor for setting yourself up for the next shot. So I had that shot in the fifth of the sixth that kind of put us up. It was our first lead, I think, in any overtimes. So, yeah. you know, just to knock that down and feel fresh w- was really nice because, you know, I had a little bit left in the tank where, where you guys were just, you know, gassed because you guys were balling out. Um, not to not to mention the first the first the first shot that you hit that they didn't count in overtime. Oh yeah, <laughs> and regulation. How do, how yeah. the fuck did we forget to talk about that? I, re- that, I remember. Right yeah, there. I remember as soon as you hit it, I I ran up to you, bro. Hey, I ran bro, up to you, you on top you, of the sports table. You see the picture? You're the first one like My this. fucking face is all <laughs> fucking shit, and I was like, it looked so bad the next day. But there was no way that I wasn't going to try to celebrate, you know, because oh, that, man, that that was so much was I don't, what was that like hitting that shot for you? That's what I want to know. Bro, you know, no, you know, no thoughts went through my head. It was just right when that thing went in, just everything was like, <laughs> and then I just, and then I just turned seeing that thing, you yeah. know, it was just a reaction. Like, and then uh, you get up there, you were D-Wade up there. You were D-Wade on the scoreboard, man. It was fucking incredible. Man, that, uh, that that whole game, bro. Who was in front of you at that time, though? It was uh, the four man. I can't that remember. Was, that was uh, Gavin Edwards. Gavin, fucking great memory, man. Gavin <laughs> Edwards. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, Gavin, man, it was uh, that was a bucket too. I thought it was good. I mean, it was it was right down to the fingertip. But um, bro, you know, I thought it was good if I did all that. Oh yeah. Oh, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. There's no way you'd exert that much energy celebrating if you didn't. But um, but yeah, man. To, like, how how did you feel? Because I know that every time that 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 time of year comes around, I'm just so happy that we were on the winning side, because it gets oh. talked about nonstop. You know, bro. You never hear a UConn person talking about the game. Never. Just, I, never. I, I, That's something that they're still just trying to bury. You know. You'll, but you'll never be able to bury that because it's the greatest college basketball game of all time. And, yeah. and look how it was set up, bro. Madison Square Garden, Big East Tournament, UConn-Syracuse, 
Jim Behan, Jim, Jim Calhoun. Like you got everything set up, like New York City ESPN, two yeah. rivals going at it. Okay, th- we started the drama with the shot that didn't count. Motherfuckers like, oh, okay, we go. So that's kind of the starter of the drama. Now we go one, two, three, four, five. Like, yeah. bro, you know, and unless you won that game. And two, uh, I remember Kemba missed one. Yeah. Uh, AJ Price, Jeff AJ Adrian. Price missed one. Jeff Adrian missed one. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, it was tough, man. It was, uh, but I just remember the most vivid memories to me was, was hanging out at the hotel after the game and just watching the reruns on ESPN thinking like, man, what the Instant fuck classic. What the fuck did we just do? You know, <laughs> like that was the best memory to me. We were, I remember the, the game finished at like one, but we were up to like three thirty four, just yeah, adrenaline flowing, you know? Um, and not to mention we went overnight, over, uh, overtime the next night too. And beat West Virginia with Deshaun Butler and Truck Bryan and Kevin Jones and uh, who's yeah, the big Alex, lanky Devin Alex, Ebanks? Devin Ebanks, Alex Ruoff. I remember. Man, come on, man! Those some ball players, man. Coopers, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we. I think and then I think we fucked up when we lost to uh, to Louisville in the final. We just ran out of gas, man. That was it. Yeah. And and then then we talked about that squad though. Louisville had a hell of a squad, bro. Yeah. Oh, like they had four NBA guys on their team. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah, hell of a squad. But yeah, those were those were all great memories, man. To do it on that stage, you know, to 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 have that experience of you know, on the biggest stage of college basketball, to be able to be on the winning side of that, man, that, that's something that will always stick close to my heart for sure. And bro, you know, in the garden they got your jersey up there, and, yeah, and like, yeah, you, yeah. how dope is that, bro? Like it's in the garden, cool. like in the New York Madison Square Garden, bro, the yeah. best place for basketball in the whole world. You got, I remember they got your jersey. It's like a, it's like a shrine yeah, for the yeah. 6 game, right? Yeah. My, uh, my pops wound up sending that to me when they, uh, when they put it up in year one, when they did the reconstruction. Um, but it's cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm flattered to be, to be up there, you know, to be, to have my jersey. Obviously I played in New York for a bit. So, you know, to have that kind of, um, that duality is, is pretty cool. Um, and, and just to have my, my, my Jersey up in the garden in general is like, it's an amazing feeling, man. Although, you know, 